through the podcast. I am so excited for this specific episode. I would love to welcome Altea, my friend, my mentor, colleague, and just a really, really big inspiration for me within the healing space. Um, welcome, Altea. Thank you so much for being here, babe. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this conversation. Yeah, so Altea is a multidimensional energy healer, worker. She's classically Reiki trained and her main modality is light language. Maybe some of you are hearing about this for the first time. I'm going to let hand it over to her to kind of explain a little bit more of like how she works and her main focus and yeah, just how she is really helping the collective of planet earth right now rise in this ascension process that we're going through right now so yeah if you want to maybe just um, introduce yourself a little bit more and just give a bit of a background to the work that you do and a bit of a brief history of your spiritual journey and awakening process sure so yeah i mean i'm a light language channeler so um light language is a healing modality it's literally the new technology that's coming in you know, from our higher versions of selves, from the galactic. So it's quite like a broad um, healing modality. It basically is um, an expression of the soul itself. So it can be expressed in different ways, written, sung, um, spoken, danced. Uh, everyone has their unique individual way of expressing it. Not everyone necessarily can channel light language, although we do all have galactic DNA that we can tune in. So I can expand a little bit more on that further on but basically yeah I will use light language um, I do a lot of different healing modalities I will do Akashic clearing timeline clearing um, but basically someone comes to me and whatever is needed for them at that moment in time I'll do I train energy workers as well I train people into opening up their channel and expanding into light language um, I train channeling in general as well I run abundance mentorships and courses too um, so with me, like it started when I was a child, I always had like psychic vision and intuition growing up. So it was really something that was always within my field and awareness. I do come from a long lineage of witches, both my mom and my grandmother are, well, grandmother was, my mom is psychic. They never really took it up as a career, but we've always kind of like had this in the family and I was, you know, the one who was like, okay, well, let's do something about it. So <laughs> I started um, very early with tarot. So at like 12 and 13, I had my first deck. And then I sort of like left it a little bit in my teens. And then I had quite a few interesting and very traumatic experiences as well that brought me to where I am now and made me shift very quickly. Like sometimes I feel like saying I lived, you know, a thousand lifetimes just in this one, um, which I'm sure a lot of, you know, energy workers and people who have been <laughs> in those dark places and been the shadow <laughs> feel like, it's, you know, a bit different. it's very seldom that I hear someone, oh, my awakening process has been so chilled and so relaxed, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> So, so that was that, but it was really when we had the, um, you know, the pandemic that I decided to move my business online. I already had a Reiki studio before that. I had to close that down because of, you know, not being able to, you know, have people come in and whatnot. And yeah, and then that really expanded. Um, the Reiki training really helped me to become more embodied and to stay embodied, to stay humble and to stay grounded within my practice as well. So um, I'm also a um, hypnosis uh, trained. I trained in hypnosis, mesmerizing NLP and magnetism too. And I'm a Kundalini yoga and multi-yoga teacher. So I incorporate all of this um, in my programs. I do six weeks, six month programs um yeah so like I work a lot organically with my clients so you know depending on what they need I have a standard session that I suggest for first-time clients and then we generally either take it from there or they see me maybe every like six to eight weeks um so yeah so this is a little bit about me mm, thank you so much and for those listening and watching I highly recommend going to Altea's YouTube 
channel. She has so many videos that go more into depth in her story. And um, I don't think we have time to get into it now, but she's had some very interesting and weird and wacky abduction experiences and experiences with ETs. And yeah, go check out her YouTube channel and you can learn more about that. But I want to get on because we have, I have so many exciting things I want to talk to you about. Um, so let's just talk about like what the F is going on right now and like maybe a little bit of an energy update and overview for 2024 and beyond. I mean, I have heard some light workers saying, you know, like we've been in this kind of process between 2012 to 2024. That's been this 12 year kind of cathartic period. And now next year, 2025, we're going into this kind of new epoch, kind of new era and yeah, can you please just give us some guidance? Because I'm sure I'm not the only human on planet Earth that is literally like, what the F is going on right now? The so astrology, <laughs> the energy, the ascension, it's it's a lot, yeah. So on more like a short-term basis with regards to what's happening right now, going into April and moving, you know, more towards the middle of the year, basically what happened is um, with the astrological new year, yes, there is a very um, big shift that's happening in within 2024, but on a collective level, we hadn't kind of like reached the optimal timeline yet by the time that we got into April. So in between March and the beginning of April, everything was sent to be cleared to everyone. So everyone is like clearing like, you know, um, exponentially so that we can raise the frequency to get to the timeline where we are supposed to be. So that's going to level out in the next few weeks. We obviously have um, Mercury retrograde for the whole month of April. We had the pre-shadow period just before that. We had these two eclipses. We had the lunar one. Now we're going into the solar one. We had this 4-4 port mm -hmm. yesterday, which was also um, quite a lot going on with that. Um, so this is kind of like a little bit in the short term. In the long run, what we can expect for 2024 is a lot more um, uh, the awakening and the ascension process going a lot more mainstream. There's going to be a lot more energy workers and healers coming to the front. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot more expansion. It's going it's almost like people who had no idea that this was going on are now going to be like, oh, Actually, there is something going on. You know what I mean? And this is going to set the basis for um, 2025, 2026. It is a year of shift. Um, a lot of grid work is happening. So I'm involved. I do a lot of grid work around the planet. And I've recently connected with a few other colleagues and there's a lot of very pivotal points that are being activated and that will be activated within this year. Um, so, so that's quite important that's happening. And then, yeah, I mean, again, like, it's up to the choice of the individual, you know, um, all we can do is really hold our light and lead by example. But I have a really positive feeling with this year. Having said that, you know, there are things that can happen when it comes to, you know, the earth and things like that. But for me, I really try to hold a neutral space. So I know there's people talking about solar flashes and earthquakes and things like that. And um, when it comes to navigating these spaces, I think it's always better to be very mindful and aware to what we share, because what we say can influence the collective. And when you hold quite a big container with regards to, you know, social media and public, then you need to be very mindful of how you speak. So for me, um, yeah, this is the, as much as I can say for now. And this, this, this going more mainstream is the main thing that I see happening. Amazing. And um, just quickly, can you explain to those who are listening who may not know what exactly grid work is? Yeah. So I get asked this quite a lot. So grid works, it's just basically activating certain ley lines that are dormant within the earth and certain pockets and portals of energy um, and codes of DNA that are dormant on earth so that it can assist um, with the vibrational frequency rising of the planet and of the collective. So what recently happened is that there was a tear within the 3D and the 4D astral space, which is not uncommon, like it's something that happens. And there were a lot of souls that were being cleared and released through that. And as that sort of like ended and is ending, we had the entail of it, um, more codes were activated within the, the consciousness grid of Gaia, the crystalline consciousness mm. grid. So um, I was shown this image of the earth and literally these points like lighting up. Um, so, I mean, if you, an energy worker and your vision is activated, you can close your eyes and tune in and see the grid, even if not necessarily your vision is, is, isn't activated, you know, I mean, we all have a third eye. So if you have a little bit of 
um, kind of like, uh, if you're comfortable in doing that, you should try and then you will get shown what the grid looks like. Amazing. Um, and then I also want to just ask you quickly, I you speak a lot about soul fragment retrieval and like what this is and you know how we can heal on a multi-dimensional level because I feel like that's really where we're going like healing isn't going to just be like oh we we drink our green juice and we do our yoga class and we meditate you know like we're actually incorporating more high high frequency light into our system and into our body and we're healing like karmically not just for our own body and our own timeline but literally our entire family our lineage you know our entire lineage dna can you just go into that quickly yeah so basically what happens sometimes okay let's just start by saying that um all souls are whole and even if soul fragment retrieval occurs, it doesn't mean that there's anything missing from anyone. Mm, Souls mm. are also navigating the process of evolutionary consciousness between the different densities. Like you've got your 3D, your 4D, your 5D. It's the same with the soul. The soul has different densities mm. and it's navigating and it's learning lessons. Okay. So sometimes what can happen when you go through um, extensive trauma in past parallel previous lifetimes, um, there can be soul fragmentation. So let's say you get stabbed uh, or murdered and you die and it's very traumatic and shocking and you you can you can you can have soul fragmentation through that experience so what we are working through and let me also say this that complete soul uh, retrieval is not really possible at this moment in time within the human body because this um, physical container would not be able to uphold the magnitude and the high vibrational frequency of all that light so mm. It's almost like saying the healing is never going to end. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, this, baby. not in this lifetime. It just gets easier. <laughs> mm. um, and so when you go through um, these experiences, when you start having recollection of, you know, past, parallel and previous lifetimes, you uh, really start healing them. So having knowledge of them is already halfway through healing them. What you can do on a practical level is when you get, you know, this vision or this experience or even this emotion or even this trigger towards a person or towards a situation, send it gratitude, send it love. That way you're able to neutralize the timeline. So what I do for my clients is I'll go in and I'll see what's going on and I'll assist with that as well um but when you start operating on a multi-dimensional level you start healing all these other experiences and lifetimes um and then you really start uh, being able to co-create your reality because you start operating from a space that is neutral you start objectively observing your experience and you're not carrying you know the the the, the construct and the programming that the trauma would have um, or you know the experience has given you within this lifetime so you really operate from the space of neutrality and yeah and then you can you can you know you can really create whatever it is that you want so soul fragment retrieval is quite an important part of healing um and and the more soul fragment retrieval you do the more you start operating on a multi-dimensional level if you are assisting um healing if you're doing energy work i mean in other aspects as well but it's very noticeable when you are actively doing energy work that you actually like operate on different levels and with different higher versions of self mm, mm, totally i almost see it like a mirror that has been cracked and the shards like splatter across you know the entire lifetime and time different timelines and then slowly as we go along we kind of collect the different shards of the mirror and start to glue them back together and kind of create this whole structure picture and every part that you kind of gather back to you creates more power and more um self active act actualization and um, spiritual activation in our multidimensional power because we're not just human beings we're you know we're spiritual beings having a human experience and there's so many different layers of reality that we can start to tap into and I think that's that's why I'm so inspired by by the work that Altair does because it's so it's so like on the forefront of like where we're going and like yeah, it's just, it's mind blowing and so fascinating that we can start to have these relationships with past lifetimes, previous lifetimes, parallel lifetimes, and really just start to call back our power on this multidimensional level. Um, and I would love to get your thoughts on how you kind of see this working with, um, you know, the whole divine feminine rising and like this whole, um, you know, really uh, increase in consciousness 
for women to heal as well as men to heal their relationship with the divine feminine? Okay, so, I mean, I think it's been exponentially growing in the past few years. Like we've seen it, we can see it. I think it's important for everyone to be true to themselves. So, you know, if you feel like you want to navigate the direction of woman empowerment, do that. Like, it's not necessarily what I do. Like, I, I try to stay as neutral as possible. So I work with mm -hmm. both uh, men and women. And it's quite interesting because when I first started in my line of work um, and I started working online, 90% of my clients would be women. Now it's almost half and half. So it's quite interesting how that's evolved and changed throughout the years. I do work myself with the womb in my own practice, in my own kind of like life and in my own magic. Let's put it that way. I assist in womb healing as well. Um, I do find that um, a lot of it has to do obviously with the abandonment wound and not feeling good enough and the lack of self-love and self-trust. Also the consumeristic society, the needing for external validation to feel whole to feel fulfilled you know so it's all intertwined and tangled with together definitely I mean there is a lot of power within the womb I mean we create life so mm. <laughs> definitely you know something that uh, can be can be harnessed can be used can be expressed can help can assist in expanding but men also have an energetic womb they also have their feminine side so for me I work a lot on assisting people in creating the balance between the two because I myself um I worked very hard to get to a point where I had balance with both my masculine and my feminine. This is why now it's interesting to see because now I get a lot of men clients as well and I can actually hold that space and that frequency for them while perhaps before um, I wasn't, you know, um, as capable of doing that within my container. So I don't know if this answers your question, but this is kind of like how I operate within that space and with mm. my Mm, and and how do you see the womb as this multidimensional portal and and how you know and how the sacral the blocks of the sacral chakra can really just impact you know the entire stability of the being yeah i mean i think every chakra is a multidimensional portal every organ is a multidimensional portal every cell is a multidimensional portal mm. um the womb in itself is so powerful because it holds life and i think that that really is kind of like you know what distinguishes it from everything else but i think yeah within within an individual level my advice would be to really like speak to your womb speak to your sacral chakra connect with it like through the heart center um mm. and i find that generally when there's sacral blockages there's root blockages as well they tend to go hand in mm. hand and if the root is stable the sacral blockages tend to be hand in hand with the solar plexus um it's mm. not that often that it's only the sacral but i do find so i work a lot with women who've come out from abusive relationships having been through an experience like that myself um it's something that they come to me a lot for and i find that that obviously like most of them the sacral is suppressed and it's blocked and that's what we need to work on you know the self power the self love the self trust but it's funny like this is what they're sending to me now it's quite interesting because when it comes then down to boundaries which are the highest form of self-love or one of in my opinion then those are seen more kind of like as a masculine side so you can mm. only like the masculine part of the womb being integrated within that as well if it makes sense it's just what they sent me now so it's quite interesting yeah to, mm. to that mm. way. one of my favorite quotes that Altea literally lives by is that boundaries without what is it? Boundaries without empathy or empathy without boundaries is self-destruction. That's yeah. it. Yes. That is one of my favorite quotes of yours. And I literally wrote it on a post-it note and I have it like on my desk and I look at it almost every day. And it's, it's just one of my favorite things that you always speak about. So I love that you brought that in because really when we heal the womb, we're able to feel our boundaries on that embodied level so much better. And it's like that automatic yes, no, yes, no becomes so much easier. And then I obviously do a lot of healing in connection to the throat chakra and how the womb and the throat are so deeply connected um yeah it's, it's really really interesting how these the body just mirrors each other and when we start to heal you know one part it automatically has this um layover effect into other aspects of the body um and i also you did touch on the importance of like the heart in this process and i think a lot of people 
they think that like spiritual healing is very like woo woo and very much like in the head and like meditating and being floating off planet earth and we're like these spiritual beings and like but the the type of spiritual healing that you and I both do is very grounded into the 3D and I think it's really important to bring this up because if we're just working with the higher chakras, we're actually spiritually disassociating and spiritually bypassing the the really like deep, dark shadow work that needs to be done in the lower chakras. And so that's why it's so beautiful when we start to heal on this multidimensional level, we can start to operate from that neutral place of just deep love and self-compassion from that heart space. And the power of the heart is something that I'm just blown away by almost every time. I do this work with women because I guide them into their wombs through their connection of the heart. Yes, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Like for sure. It's really, really, really interesting also to see how that's evolved. Um, I think that, yeah, a lot of people, it is a thing in the spiritual community. Um, it's not easy to find spiritual practitioners, practitioners which are embodied and grounded at the same time. You know, it's mm. exactly as you said, there's a lot happening in the higher chakras. And sometimes what happens is the channel comes in through the higher chakras, the hearts get bypassed, and there is a distortion. This is when where distortion happens, you know, within the channel, within the communication and things like that. Um, and also I think another important thing is always revert back to the body, like the body knows if something doesn't feel mm. physically like your body will tell you so when you have a question or you're struggling you know tune into the heart tune into the heart center and tune into the body on a physical level but exactly as you said like I work a lot with heart and throat connection so making sure thoughts actions emotions and words are all in alignment you're saying something you're doing it um you are you know you 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 say something and then it's what you believe in you're not doing something against your will you're not saying yes when you really want to be saying no which that is also not being in your truth and I think there's a big misconception a lot of the times my clients come to me and ask them are you in your truth and they're like yes and and I'm like, well, do you know how to say no? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, then you're not in your truth. You know, being in your truth doesn't mean you're just not lying. <laughs> it also means, you know, that you mm. need to be truthful to your heart, to your body, to how you feel and to what direction it is that you need to go down. So, yeah, my advice for anyone who wants to, you know, accelerate their healing process and, you know, walk down this path is just make sure that thoughts, actions, emotions and words are all in alignment. You're saying something, you're doing it, you know, and that also goes hand in hand with the boundaries um, as we as we just mentioned. But I think, yeah, the heart is basically like your guiding compass, I would say. Yeah. Mm, that's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Um, yeah, wow. And I want to. I want to go down a, a little bit of an esoteric route and just bring in like the consciousness of Mary Magdalene because I feel like this is very connected to the womb space and kind of like the codes of the rose that are kind of coming through and maybe you can also just speak a little bit about your past life experiences as a priestess I would love to hear yeah. about that and like how you know, I also obviously was a priestess in a past life. I'm not sure which one, but how that is kind of coming through and how, you know, these these ancient DNA codes are starting to be activated through the body and through these ascended masters being more present in the current ascension um, journey. And just, yeah, your thoughts around anything around that. Yeah, I want to add two things. I'll first speak briefly about Mary Magdalene because I do work with her a lot. She was one of the first Ascended Masters that came to me when I first started channeling. I always, and it's so funny because her frequency is coming back quite a lot. I, I spoke about it. I did an interview two days ago and Mary Magdalene came up there as well. And she hasn't come up in a while in, in, in speaking, but she's coming back to the forefront. She was I don't want to say she took a back step, but I think she was busy doing other stuff in the last few years. Um, even if they are multidimensional, I think her yeah, babes has a busy schedule. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I call on her every morning. But she first came to me, I think maybe seven or eight years ago. And how I see her is, I see her um, surrounded by beautiful baby blue and with this beautiful long baby blue veil. And she comes through in assisting the womb. And she comes through with a very nurturing motherly energy. So sometimes a woman that I work with who like whose mother has passed on, um, she will come through and bring in that energy and bring in that frequency. Um, so, so yeah, so I just 
just wanted to add that on her with regards to okay the the life that comes for me to express because this you can also relate to it on a practical level um is when i was i was a tantric high priestess in ancient egypt and i was held a lot of power i was a very powerful woman back then i would work with like snakes and energies and magic and whatnot anyway long story short um, a lot of men, they didn't like me. They didn't like that I had so much power. Like they were very upset and angry with me because I was holding this power. And some of these men, um, I ended up encountering within my lifetime here now on earth. Um, wow. so yeah, that came through to me. This was back in 2021 when I did this very big sequel in wound clearing. Um, it was very weird. I went through a whole phase where it was almost like I was getting purposely hurt and psychically attacked um, by people who weren't aware of doing it. And then I went through this healing of my wound when I was told that they were carrying some resentment from that lifetime, but they weren't aware of it, but I haven't, I hadn't healed it. So I was attracting them through the frequency of my womb to subconsciously come through and hurt me. I mean, this wasn't like a, like a hectic hurt. Like it wasn't like, you know, it was more like I would have an appointment and the person would like pitch up, you know, it was like, it was weird. Okay. We're happy yeah. like month. Like, it seemed like I couldn't, like, connect or communicate to a lot of people that I wanted to. And then, and I had to move through that to clear it. Um, yeah, and then once that was cleared, I was able to integrate more parts of my multidimensional self. But, yeah, this is a good example of sometimes we can carry stuff through from that life, from those lifetimes. We obviously also carry a lot of power from them but sometimes you can carry through trauma and then this this was specifically womb related like this was it was all womb work and I think it was about a month to a month and a half that I did a very intense clearing I remember I had to take some time off clients as well because there was quite a lot going through wow yeah and um what was what was some of like the lessons that came to you through that process if you want if you don't mind sharing yeah, I think it was trust, a lot of trust. And I was like, I was like, mm. oh God, why is this happening? In the unknown. I feel yeah, like because, that's what the womb represents. It's yes, the big because, unknown. Exactly. I was only told like months after that this was what was going on. I didn't know at the time that this was happening. So I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, why is life being so weird right now? You know? Mm. Um, and so I think, yeah, that was probably the biggest one that came through. I mean, it's a constantly like a trusting process and I was ready. Mm. I was in trust, but it was, yeah, I think it was definitely the trust of the unknown, as you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always new, one of my coaches says like new levels, new devils. And so it's like, no matter where you are on the path, it's like, there's always deeper levels of trust and surrender and self-compassion and forgiveness that we have to cultivate. And so, yeah, like you said in the beginning, like the healing journey doesn't really end. It's just, like you said, becomes easier and we come become more embodied and we're able to, how I see it is alchemize things a lot faster. Whereas in the beginning of my healing journey, you know, things take slow and it's hard and it's sticky and it's just like a pain in the ass. And now things come up and I'm able to clear like within one session, within one hour, within one yoga practice, within one meditation. And so I think, you know, for those of you that are listening and you're on the path and maybe you're, you're struggling right now, like just know that it does get easier and like Altea said, it's really just about trusting the path that you're on, even if you can't see, you know, more than a few steps in front of you, like that's okay. And just know that there are others that have been where you are right now and help is always available to those that ask for it and to those that seek it. And you're never alone in your journey. And that's why women and healers like Altea and I are so vocal and so expressive online and in our communities is because you know we want to help people through these processes and help them become easier because honestly I was thinking about this quote the other day it's like um, if you liberate yourself as a human being you have the responsibility to liberate others and to liberate those in your community and to hold that um, that beacon of light for your community for your family for your lineage and for those around you um, because it's yeah there's a lot of very intense polarities on planet earth right now and I think it can be really hard to sometimes try to stay neutral or try to stay in love or try to 
you know, when we just bombarded with like negative media all the time. And I mean, that's why I don't watch the news. I don't allow myself to get programmed by all of this fear mongering and just staying in direct alignment with our vertical channel in direct connection to universe source God and just staying true to our hearts and our path. Yeah, I think um, I wanted to ask, was that a Hindu, a Hindu teaching? I think so. Uh, I, I think remember so. reading it as well somewhere. Um, I think it's important to have knowledge of what's going on. Like, you know, like I don't watch the news, but I am kind of like aware. And what happens mm. with me is if I'm meant to know information, it will be sent to me. So mm. I don't really do external research. Um, but sometimes a video will pop up and they'll be like, you need to watch that. So I'll be like, okay, and then I'll watch it and then I'll have knowledge and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it takes practice. And as you said, the the healing process gets quicker and easier. Sometimes it's as easy as a conversation with someone and mm. you're clearing something, you know, between each other. When you have conscious awareness, um, every moment, you know, you are rebirthing yourself. And with every moment you can, you know, be a new person, you can heal more, you can assist more, you can help more. And exactly. Mm. And there's a lot of like we put out so much free content there's a lot of we do a lot of lives you know there's a lot of content out there you know you're not alone like really you're not alone <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you for that um what did I want to say now oh yeah speaking of receiving higher wisdom and receiving guidance um, something that I've actually started to do quite recently actually is communicate with non-physical forces and communicate more with my guides and the spirits of the elements and the waters and the ocean and the forest and um, yeah I would love for you to just give some practical tips for those who kind of want to start this this process and really just like what tips do you have on connecting with your guides because we all have a team of non-physical guides spiritual beings that protect us that hold us and one thing that I really learned from Altea specifically is the the law of non-intervention and this is basically saying that your guides cannot help you unless you ask for it and that's just like you will not receive help in your 3d physical life if you don't make that appointment with that doctor that healer that coach that wellness therapist go to the yoga class it's like you have to make that initial signal that you want the contact that you want that experience and then you can allow yourself to open up to receive. And I also speak about this with the body. It's like we need to ask the body, tune in with the body to create that beautiful multidimensional um, communication channel because we're so used to just receiving knowledge and wisdom through the mind, through the mental sphere, but actually codes and wisdom can come through like every sense, every, every sense yeah for sure. and, and also maybe just speaking on how we can activate that those higher senses the multi-dimensional aspects of each sense so for me what I always get guided to do is just have a lot of structure my life is quite structure I flow being in alignment lies between surrendering to the divine will of the universe and having some structure and discipline. So exactly as you said, calling in your guides, connecting with them. I work a lot with the element of fire, but I call in all the elements every morning. It can be something as simple as lighting a candle and calling in the fire to cleanse, doing a little bit of breath work, working with the air, drinking some water and blessing it before you're drinking it. You know, there's all these little like things that you add in your life that be, that look like extra and then they're not anymore and then they just become a part of you so for me um yeah i mean listen like i'll ask a lot of stuff i don't get everything that i ask but if i don't ask i'm definitely not gonna get <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah like, ask and you shall receive yes exactly exactly and that is one of the biggest things that people are not aware of that you need to call them you need to call your guides you need to speak i suggest to even like speak in the in the you know in the 3d actually like speak to loud yeah yeah like i mean if someone doesn't know me and they look at me they're like she's just like talking to herself but i talk to my guides throughout the day and you know um the the textbook term definition of someone who is schizophrenic is someone who hears voices but cannot function in normal society now I speak to my guides and I hear them a lot I don't necessarily hear like voices you know what I mean so now that also makes you understand how you know we've been programmed to believe that it's yes. a bad thing 
you know yes. that you know, obviously you don't want to get like people you know stuff telling you what to do that's not how it works but everyone's intuition is different we all have our clairs which is like you know our senses so we've got um five different well we actually have six but we have the clairs that are connected to you know our smelling our tasting our touching our hearing and our feeling and then we have our clear cognizance which ideally is where you want to be operating from so i'll use my clear my clairvoyance like mainly but i've mainly use also my clear cognizance which is the innate knowing which is the intuition which is the trusting your gut instinct okay and your yeah. guides can help you with that as well so my advice is to yeah um work, work work ritualistically because with ritual you are building spiritual strength so again waking mm. up doing a little bit of yoga doing a little bit of meditation you don't have to get and take an hour off every morning you can sit for like five minutes, 10 minutes, you can sit. Mm, and mm. what works really well is the emotion of gratitude because gratitude puts you in a state of abundance and assists you in aligning with a high vibrational frequency baseline timeline. If you're grateful for mm. everything that you have, you're going to get more of what it is that you desire. Desire is a good emotion to want something and to need it comes from a space of lack. So that will put you mm -hmm. back clarity and out of you know being able to manifest but desiring something from a place of non-attachment would probably be the best way to manifest it yeah yeah amazing and I think that also just comes from like that state of freedom that we cultivate internally that really just allows us to be grounded in the presence and in like the knowing that like okay I'm okay as I'm, I'm, I am now and I'm grateful for everything that I am now because really when you when you advance on your spiritual journey you actually start to have so much gratitude for everything that has ever happened to you because you know that like even the worst trauma that you went through still led you up to where you are now and that is actually so beautiful when you can look at it from this higher lens to have gratitude like even though it was fucking difficult and hard you still were able to get through it and it's led you up to where you are now. And without that, you know, you may not have integrated the knowledge and the wisdom and the insights that you have now as an embodied being, because on the other side of every trauma and hard experience through shadow work and integration is personal power. And I think that's what we were also speaking about earlier with the past lifetime integration is once you integrate and heal that, that actually just catapults your level of personal power and embodiment in your current lifetime. Yeah, and there's, I speak about this sometimes in my lives as well. There is a point within, well, every person really, but also every energy worker where you start operating from a space of unconditional love. It's almost mm. like it's a union that comes back with source. It's a twin union between your heart and source. And the way that I see it is your heart needs to be opened to a certain degree, your heart and your higher heart. Mm. Once it's reached that level of opening, then you start operating from unconditional love, from compassion, from gratitude, you know, whatnot. A lot of people say they operate from that, but actually they don't necessarily. And it's not their fault. It's just like, part of the process you need to go through certain ego deaths and certain experiences yeah initiation yes exactly and then once you mm. understand oh wow actually like thank you i'm grateful for that and whatnot then when you start operating from that space that's also when the non-attachment arrives because you have unconditional love for everyone and everything you don't really want to possess you just everything just is you know and you come to yeah understanding so that's a very powerful place to be in yeah totally and I think it like it it's it takes us away from this like grasping this controlling this like my life must look like this and I must be like this and it's like we just come to accept like who we are and how we are and everyone as they are and one of the biggest things I've actually had to learn in terms of the control dynamic on my spiritual journey is that you cannot learn soul lessons for other people. It's that whole saying, like you, you can guide a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And so that's one of my biggest things is like, I have to just be in that space of non-attachment and unconditional love and just support my community and give the love and wisdom that I know I'm on divinely purpose to share through my channel but um, people will come to this work when they're ready and they will come to these realizations when they're ready. And um, we just have to kind of accept that. And I think that's often something we need to apply to, you know, family dynamics, because 
we on a on a soul level we chose our family and we chose you know to come into this lifetime and to have our parents as our parents and our siblings as our siblings and obviously that can be kind of a tough pill to swallow because often family family dynamics can be quite tricky to navigate especially when you are a very sensitive spiritual being and you're the first in your family to go through this awakening process it can be really really alienating and that's why like honestly the power of the internet has really created these spiritual communities and and shown people that they're not alone and that they're not crazy you know they're not going insane and that kind of brings me to my next question is if you could maybe give some tips and tricks for for anyone in general but light workers and healers especially or anyone on a spiritual path let's say to stay grounded to stay sane to stay in their truth as we kind of move along this ascension process and as we kind of deepen because I mean from my perspective yes we are ascending but we still are going to see quite a lot of death and destruction and rebirth in terms of the 3d paradigm and the, the old earth, the old paradigm, the old structures and the capitalistic structures start to crumble, you know, over the next 10 years. And I think it's going to get pretty wacky here on planet Earth over the next 10 years. Like, just sitting eating my popcorn. <laughs> um, the, well, what they're saying to me is to stay out of judgment. Stay out mm. of judgment as much as you can. Judgment of self, judgment of others. And that will help you with navigating and staying grounded, staying humble, you know, staying humble, understanding that this is a learning curve. We are all learning, staying in compassion, Um, setting your boundaries, like being firm with your boundaries. Forgiveness doesn't mean forget and it doesn't mean reconnect. Mm -hmm. Someone's, you know, really hurt you and you don't want them in your life. Um, You know, you can forgive them for what they've done. It doesn't mean, you know, you guys need to see each other again. And uh, sort of thing. So understanding that those are two separate things. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, when it comes to family, like you mentioned, sometimes it can be really difficult. Um, my advice would be if you find yourself in a situation where you're getting triggered or you feel like you're going to respond react instead of respond um in a way that you know it's going to be more detrimental to you than anything else physically remove yourself from the situation and approach it again when you're in a more centered space um family you know especially parents or siblings you know they reflect back to us um some unhealed wounds or some parts of us or some parts of them you know that just want to be observed and i think if you've cleared the program within you it's not going to affect you like i've seen it with my parents i've seen it with my family i went through extensive healing with my mom and um yeah she was like really open and it wasn't easy but now like we're in a space where it's very balanced um and I've I still see some of her unhealed wounds but they don't trigger me anymore because Mm -hmm. I have the same ones and I was able to clear the program within my own system so working on yourself and leading by example is the best choice but sometimes Mm -hmm. because of like frequency clash like they can get triggered without even knowing and they'll start psychically attacking you and that's when Mm -hmm. you like so I've had this happen yeah. so many times. Oh my god, so many times. So, so rather remove yourself from the situation. Yeah. Like that, that is what's going on. Okay, yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm really excited to get into this last part in these last few minutes. Altair has agreed to do a little bit of light language channeling for you guys. Um, and now you can get to experience light language in its real time um i'm also i actually activated in light language thank you to altea we were hosting a retreat last year together and we were walking through the garden and it was actually the first time i'd experienced her light language in in person rather than through the internet through the screen and um we were walking in the garden and i was like babe i really want my light language to turn like to activate like when is this gonna happen and then like three weeks later i messaged you i'm like hey i think my light language is starting to activate just through me like setting that intention and um yeah it's it's really beautiful so i just invite all of you to yeah stay in your heart light language is something that we receive through the body through the frequency through the sound it's not meant to be mentally understood or mentally processed it cannot be directly translated it's really like a sound healing experience 
Yeah, perfect. Amazing. So you can all start by closing your eyes and anchoring into the body, finding your comfortable breathing rhythm. With every inhale, you breathe in light. And with every exhale, you release all that doesn't serve you anymore. As you relax your body, relax your system, relax your energy field. You stay in a space of openness, a space of oneness. As we call on the Archangelic Collective, Michael to the south, Uriel to the north, Raphael to the east, Gabriel to the west. All on Archangel Metatron with this blue cloak of protection from above, sound of one to seal the grid from below. So we call on our higher selves as spirit guides and anyone else who wishes to be present for the greatest and highest good, you're welcome in the space. Opening, opening. Opening, opening, yo, 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 rasiat ura yeta ishena yata krata reita 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 reate ura isietaka, tra nia shera ta kreate koro aisie sat kiera preatiet kara, yo, 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 opening, 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 releasing, releasing, releasing. Releasing, releasing systems, expanding, 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 pulling in more light, divine rays, anchoring, 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 tuning, 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 yo 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 Opening, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, removing, 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 decoding, detangling, expanding, expanding, expanding into more light, divine rays, anchoring, 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 Rahia Shisayataka, Yanitakua tek aria reatic ura ise shenayataka, Tian Mariata re a re a re a re a shesia, Tia sieta carea ket kuhai shetaka, Yasaya ishe, Saya isheta sietaka, Riana ira eo to kuai sietaka, re 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 Opening, expanding, 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 clean, releasing, 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 tuning systems through more light, divine rays coming in, anchoring, 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 anchoring into systems, new energies coming in, anchoring, 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 yo 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 sata, tiat karri tukuma ishirai se taka clean peripheral, clean, releasing, 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 letting go, letting go, letting go, limiting beliefs, removing, 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 decoding, detangling, detangling, detangling. Extracting, extracting, extracting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ra, yeah, yeah. Keep uk 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 uk. Ra isie sa taka ria ishe na ya taka eshero. Oh oh, ria ishe na ta a ria i a i a i a i a i a i a uk uk ra isie ta a ek 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 ena ya shi. Tre ati ya ta kre e o ni o ro 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 ra isie sa ta. Tiet kara kie ta ka sie ta kie ra ta kre chuning 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 niat kora ie sa ta kre ta ishe da chuning chuning. A tuning, a tuning, a tuning, activating, 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 activating more light, divine rays coming in. Yo, 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 grounding, 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 grounding. Grounding, 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 balancing, grounding, balancing, 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 balancing. Yahi shie sara, iya te kahi shie sara. Isare at ukua ishie sa sie a ere ishie taka. Shukuro ishie na ishie taka, ishie taka. Closing, ceiling, closing, ceiling, closing, ceiling, closing, ceiling, closing, closing, ceiling, closing, ceiling, closing, anchoring, 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 tuning, anchoring, tuning. Shukuro ishie sara taka. Okay, you can take your time before you gently anchor back into the body. Ooh. How are you feeling? Yeah, <laughs> the whole system is alive. That was quite a powerful one, babe. That yeah, was really... a, yeah, it was quite a lot that came through. I started, they made me start with a higher chakra. So I felt like this whole area here being like cleared and extracted almost like 
it was almost like releasing things from people's ears. So like blockages, not being able to hear, not being able to see like um, that. And then obviously a little bit of grounding in the lower, a little bit of the heart, some peripheral clearing, but it was definitely a lot. So you'll feel it in different parts of the body. Um, you'll be pressing and releasing for a few days. Sometimes you can feel a bit emotional. You can get triggered more easily. Like just the system will be recalibrating, um, but definitely yeah, quite a powerful one for sure. Mm, thank you so much I'm so grateful yeah thank you sister honestly uh, I, I just like I love you so much and I literally like bow down to the work that you do in this world like thank you for being such a leader such a yeah so grounded so empowered in your truth in your body in you know the reality of what is asked of you and thank you for for stepping up to that role and like I know it's it's not easy holding as much energy as you do for the collective like guys Altair literally fucking fights demons in the <laughs> astral like clears like apocalyptic timelines like she always tells me about like this like lightning sword that she has and like her astral <laughs> weapons that she has and like when the demons come running after her she just like jumps on her like unicorn horse and like like slays dragons I do actually love the dragons but like it slays demons and it's just like it's really hard for our 3d mind to comprehend the work that this crazy witch does for the world and for the collective and the amount of space that she is holding for this collective right now and through you know the whole time that she works so just like from me and everyone else like massive 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 thank you for going first for being such a pioneer in this world for not being afraid to speak your truth and just for yeah inspiring men and women around the world to just step into their their higher lights and to to channel more love and yeah just assist this massive shift that we're going through Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate and love you too. And I'm so proud of you and how far you've come. Like, I'm so, so proud of you. I'm so proud of us. And yeah, yeah. thank you for having me. This was lots of fun. Yeah, so much fun. Um, I would love to just give you a moment to share about some of your upcoming offerings i know you have a raffle on your website right now i mean i'm going to put all her links in the description below but i know also you're going to be doing some work at africa burn Altea and i are going to be running around africa burn together so if you can see us and you see this flaming flaming ball of red hair like come say hi to us come chat like come connect um yeah so what what you have upcoming so I've got quite a few things coming up. Yeah, I'm running. It's like a fundraiser raffle where you can win up to $3,000 worth of my content. You get lifetime access to all my workshops, my channelings, and you can just get a ticket for $9. So that's the first thing that I have coming up. The second thing that I have coming up, um, just after that, I'm going to be in the States for the uh, solstice. So I'm going to be in Los Angeles. I'll be running in person and workshops from there as well. I've got an abundance mentorship that's gonna be running in August through the Lionsgate portal. I'm only taking between 10 to 12 people there, but it is already available on my website. Um, I ran it last year as well. This one's a bit upgraded. Um, and yeah, I just teach people to anchor into their abundance if they already have a spiritual business and they're not really making a lot of money. That's how you can actually anchor into your abundance. And um, Or if you're thinking of starting a new spiritual business, and you just need to kind of understand the energetics behind abundance and financial abundance. So I explain all of that and boundaries. I'm still running my six week and six month program. So you can like just link to my website. There's a space there. You can just message me and then I'll send through all the info. I do have quite a few workshops that are up on my website as well. So how to activate your third eye, um, releasing attachments, uh, psychic attacks. So, so there's quite a few different ones to go on. Um, and then, yeah, I haven't released this yet, but it'll probably go up in the next week or two there. I'm, I'm going to be speaking and organizing a conference in San Diego on the 7-7. So that's like a big portal that's coming up as well. And then I will also be talking um, at Disclosure Fest for those of you who are in LA. 
Um, so yeah, I will be taking in person in Cape Town if you are in South Africa in the month of May. Uh, but contact me now because I am pretty booked. So if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one activations and in-person energy work, um, you can just send me a DM through my website or an email. Um, Josie, you're welcome to put my email in the comments or I mean in the description as well. And then you can just cool. tell me. So um, yeah, so that's kind of it. I have a lot of free stuff on my Instagram, on my YouTube. Um, so if you're interested to hear more light language or a little bit more about my story, you can just go through there. Oh, no, it's last thing. Sorry, I was forgetting this. Um, I'm running a Costa Rica retreat as well. I was you know, about to say your retreat. I, I was like, about that. there's so much stuff. There. And, I, and I was like, I yeah. like no, the Costa I was like, yeah, 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 that one. So I'm like three quarters booked, but I do have about like maybe three or four spaces left. It's going to be November from the 17th to the 22nd. So I think it's around Thanksgiving time and it is holiday time um yeah it's all inclusive it's six days five nights we're going to be working with the dragons and we're going to be working with the embodiment of all four elements so we're going to be working like at the waterfall we're going to be working in the rainforest we're going to be working with cacao we're going to be working with happy so there will be medicine as well and yeah i'm going to have a beautiful um, assistant with me who is also trained in cards of destiny so we might have that offer available too so yeah guys please uh, connect with me let me know this is yeah this is what I'm offering and again yeah thank you so much for having me oh thank you so much for being here and yeah all Altair's links and things will be in the, the the description and yeah go check her out subscribe follow all the things and thank you everyone for taking your time and I'll see you on the next episode how for now